Welcome back to the Fish and Coach Show. My name is Brandon Fisher. This is Coach Ratner. And today we're talking about the healthiest way to get high. Awesome, isn't it? Yeah, it sounds wouldn't you know, great. Wouldn't you want to know a really healthy way to get high? Well, I have your answer for you. We learn an important clue from the movie Forrest Gump. Did you ever see that movie? I've seen the movie. It's a great movie. Oh, yeah. There's a scene when he's being chased by those mean little kids. And they're chasing him down like the road in this little rural area. And what happens as he's running through the, the brush, his braces start to come off. Right. And he starts running, and he runs really fast. This changes his life forever. Run, Forrest, run! Run, Forrest, run! Right. That is the key to the healthiest way to get high is basically to run. Can you believe that? It's that wow. easy? You're like, oh, there's no way that running can get me high. Let me tell you something. There's something called the runner's high. You know why it's called that? Because you get high. That's the truth. Yeah. Do you know why that is? Why is that? Because we have something that our body produces. It's called dopamine and serotonin. And the more that we exercise, the more that we get our heart rate up, the more that our body produces. Wow. Do you ever notice that like runners are pretty happy people? Yeah. Yeah. You know why? I feel great. Because they're on drugs all the time, except they don't have to buy them. They're free, and they get produced by your own brain. <laughs> so, I mean, really, I'm an, a living example of it. When I was in my – I think I turned about 30, and I had been living kind of a little bit of a crazy life. I was uh, – I grew up in the D.C. area, and I was going down to Dewey Beach all the time. You ever heard of Dewey oh, Beach? Oh, wow. Yeah. It's, it's in Delaware, and it's a kind of a party town. And I go, most people, what they do is they rent a house for the summer. Most kids in their – single people in their 20s and some 30s. Sure. And if you're in your 40s, okay, maybe you're a little bit of a loser. No, just kidding. Um, I shouldn't say that. I, I uh, So you rent these house for the summer, and you go every single weekend, like Friday mm -hmm. afternoon to Sunday night, and you pay like, you know, 500 bucks for the summer. You get that use of the house every single week. Okay. With 20 other people and 20 other friends. So it's, wow. a little bit, it's a little bit crazy, but it's a lot of fun. It sounds like a blast. It's, it really was a blast. And so since I worked for myself being a rare coin dealer, I set my own hours. I'd say, you know, why should I drive down in the traffic on the Friday? Let me go Friday morning. Well, if I'm going to go Friday morning, let me go Thursday night because then I can go to the half price, you know, beer night at the, the, oh, at the, the bottle and cork or something, whatever it was. And then instead of leaving Sunday night, I'd be like, you know what? Why should I leave in the traffic on Sunday? I can leave Monday morning when no one else is leaving. And that turned in from Thursday night to Monday morning to Wednesday night to Tuesday morning. And I was basically spending my whole time at the beach. I was having a great time. But sounds, I start, sounds rough. It, it, it actually ended up being rough because I'm trying to run a business and I was managing my business at the time and like be the party animal that I wanted to be. And I couldn't uh -huh. do both. And so I got depressed. It wasn't wow. major, but I went through some depression and I started running and I made a point. I'm going to start running six. Now it's 30 years old at times. So I can't do this now. I was going to run six miles a day, like five or six days a week. And guess what? Okay. I did it. And you kept it up. I, I kept wow. it up, and I my depression completely went away, and then I was able to make more money in my business, have a lot more energy. My brain was working faster. My brain was working more efficient. My body was working more efficient. You felt healthier. And I felt healthier. And I, I mean, wow. I'm not, I don't run like that anymore. I try to run because now you get a little older. You start to have little aches and pains and can't do it as much, but I still run at least four day, four, three or four days a week. That's great. Yeah, and people say, how do you have so much energy? You're 56 years old. You look like you're... 55 years old. That's kidding. Like, because I run, because I have a lot of energy, because of yeah. the free drugs that I'm given. You know, it sounds like the more you run, the more tired you'd be because you're using so much more energy, but it doesn't work it's like that. It's the exact opposite. It's like my kids. I have to rest up tonight because I'm going to go to do something. I'm going to play soccer tonight, so I'm going to rest my body. No, the more energy you expand, expend, the more expand. energy you expend, the more you get. It's like with babies. You know, people say, I don't want my baby to fall asleep because, I say this all the time, because they won't be able to sleep tonight. I'm not sure that's so true. I think the more you sleep, the more you sleep. Yeah. Yeah. I, just, I, I always have the attitude, never wake a sleeping baby. Just let oh, him wow. sleep. And if I'm going to fall asleep, I never say, you know, if I'm going to fall asleep, let's say, after dinner. I don't worry, like, oh, I'm not going to sleep tonight. You always end up sleeping. So you can read or something. I mean, you, you, you'll, right. you'll fall I, some people have that, that challenge, but I think that for the most part. And plus, I got to tell you about running. Yeah. It, 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 it gets your, the blood flung through your brain, so you get a lot more inspiration. In fact, a totally. lot. Totally. The biggest breakthroughs come like 30 minutes into the run. Oh, yeah. I, I mean, I've had so many brilliant. I shouldn't say brilliant. I think they're brilliant. They're probably stupid. Whatever. Okay. I've had so many ideas that have come from me <laughs> running because I, I just, I don't know. I can't tell you why. I, I got Moving. 
you're moving. You're I, 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 had a, I had this one time. First of all, I used to try to play golf. When I say try to play, because I'm just not very good. And I kept score. I'm, I'm, you know, I'm, I like living with clarity. I like the truth. So I kept real score. I, mean, I was shooting in the 120s and 130s. I was a okay. horrible golfer. Just horrible. I couldn't hit a driver. Whatever. So one time, I ran an Army 10-miler in D.C. Wow. And nice I job. went with my friend Todd Vecchio. We went and played with his father at Reston Golf Course. Okay. And I, and I keep, I mean, I don't. If, if, if I'm in the woods and my ball's like on a stick and I move the stick and it moves the ball, I take a penalty stroke. I mean, I don't cheat. I shot a 102, which for wow. me was like I'm shooting in the 120s, 130s. That was a big deal That's for me. That's a big, a big difference. And yeah. why was? Because I ran a 10 miler this morning. Wow. Another time I, I, I ran a 10 miler. I think the more you run, the better. Did you ever happen. run the cherry blossom 10 miler? I did run That the, is a beautiful no, race. 10K. No, a 10 miler. Cherry Maybe blossom. Maybe but. Well, it doesn't matter. Uh, yeah, I did run. Line. I did run the cherry blossom. Maybe you're right. It was a ten miler. Yeah, you run through yeah. all the monuments. Yeah, the yeah, yeah. Spectacular. And I remember coming home after a race, and I went to play the piano. I used to play a lot of piano, and my fingers were like, <laughs> I'm like, oh my gosh, I can't believe I'm playing. Like your body just reacts well to lots of exercise. It's emotion. Wow. Now I want to tell you something. A lot of people are going to say, you know what? You know, I, I, I walk. I rather walk. Walking's great. It is, but it's not the same. I always like to look at things. How can I do something the most efficient way? Now, I, used to, I did walk for a while because my wife wanted me to start walking. So we'd walk like an hour and 15 minutes in hills when we lived in Potomac, Maryland. And it was good. I have to tell you, I, I, I was producing serotonin and dopamine. It did feel good. But it was an hour and 15 minutes every single day. It was, a, uh-huh. it was a lot of time to be taken away from it. I can get the same amount in like 25, 20 minutes running. And not right. everyone has the time to do that, to run, to walk that fast at a fast pace, not, not like strolling, uh, and you can't be on flat surfaces. You need to be on the hills to get your heart going. You have oh. to get your heart up. And people say, well, I do yoga. Yoga is great. Unless you're an expert, though, you're not going to burn the same amount of calories. You're not going to get your heart rate up doing basic downward dog. I mean, like, you have to really, if you do advanced yoga, for sure, that is some crazy stuff. And I believe that is just as good, just like I think right. spinning is really good. There are a number of exercises, but the easiest and the one that's the most efficient is running because you can do it anywhere, any time of day, even wow. in the snow. I've even gone, I've fact, You ran in the snow? I ran in the snow. It's actually kind of fun to run. I mean, like, to be carried to wear boots because you don't want to slip. But running in the rain's fun. Running in the, like, obviously, running in the rain was fun. Running in the rain in the winter was a little less fun. Though. I'm not going to do it now. I'm not telling you, I was 20 and you know, my 30s and stupid, whatever. But I'm not going to do it now. But it is the, the best form of exercise. Now, I know, I remember when I was, there are guys I know who used to lift a lot of weights, and they're like 150 pounds overweight, and they brag to me about how much they're lifting. I'm like, great, like lose some weight. I mean, like you should go run. Lifting weights is great. But how many times, because I used to lift a lot of weights, how many times do you are walking down the street and some lady's going to drop her purse and you go, ma'am, I got a few. I, I got your purse. Hold on. I've been doing dumbbells for like three years at 45 pounds a piece. I got it. Let me lift your purse up. Here you go. Here, here, here's your purse. Here, I got it. See these muscles? I got the guns. I can lift your purse. What do you, what do you need weight lifting for? Like what right. is it? Now, I, I think everyone should work out. I think lifting weights is great. But when you're lifting weights, and it's, and it's just, unless it's your weightlifter, it's probably, which I had was low self esteem. You want to look good. You sure. Know? Well, allow me to hold the baby. Yeah, let me get the baby. Like, I like to wear and use like the, the tight black shirts, the, the cutoffs, and like the guns would stick out. It's great. It does make you feel good. I admit sure. it. But as you get old, oh, as, I've, as I've grown, I've realized that was just because of low self esteem. <laughs> That's all it was, you know. Yeah. I wasn't a weightlifter. It's still good to lift weights, but I, you know, I didn't need to lift. I didn't need to spend three hours in the gym. Sure, that, yeah. that makes sense. And yeah, as a runner, I, I was on the running team in high school, and I remember going to the gym and just feeling like so insecure and tiny. But then we could go run, and we could just run and run and run. Right. It, it, it makes the the playing field much easier. You don't have to be like a big strong guy. You can be a little guy. Right. Um, in fact, one of the fastest runners in the world is this little four foot eleven uh, Beatty Deutsch. She's—I uh, don't know if she made the, yeah, the Olympic team, but like she's amazing. Like she's she wins she wins the Jewish she just Marathon, missed, uh, the Olympic time, yeah. I think, unfortunately. Anyway, I mean, she, she's probably the fastest woman in the world per square inch, per <laughs> inch of height. You know, it's true. And she runs with a skirt. You know what's really amazing? And some of these runners, like if you if you watch the Olympics, some of these these uh, these long distance runners, they can run. Per, mile, miles per hour faster 
a marathon, that speed more than I can run like ten yards. I just can't like my my legs just can't move that fast. It is insane what they can it's do. Cra- it's really it's like so it's, it's 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 mind blowing what they can do. Right. And yeah. that, that's an interesting thing to talk to talk about is the four minute mile. Oh, really, Roger Bannister. Roger Bannister. It, they thought that that was an unpenetrable mark. No one can run faster than four minutes. It's yeah. physically impossible. Scientifically, they thought for decades they tried. Right. Scientifically, physically, no human can ever do it. So they kept having more and more studies that proved and reaffirmed what they believed. And then Roger Bannister broke that four minute mile mark. And all of a sudden, a bunch of guys broke that four minute mile mark. Now there's almost high schoolers who are breaking that four minute. Well, mile I, mark. I don't think you can get into a. I don't think you can get into like a college um, running team unless you break the four minute mile. It's like the standard just to get on the team, let alone like win. Uh, break it's record. It's close to that. It's very close to it's, that. It's crazy, it's, isn't it? Yeah, it's it's because it's, it's in our mind that we can't do something. We have in our mind, you know, what? I could never be a runner. I'm not one of those runners. I'm not one of those people who can run. You know, we make right. excuses and we don't start. So how do you start? I mean, seriously. Yeah. How, how do, do you start? How do you start running? So for me, it really started how I was able to run when I was 30, like six miles a day was when I came out of college, I used to work at this pizza shop okay. at, uh, in, in, in Mary Washington College in Fredericksburg, Virginia. It's now a university. And mm-hmm. I love making pizza. We've talked about food before. I love making pizza. And it was really good pizza. And for every slice I sold, I ate a slice. All right. <laughs> All right. So what happens when you work there for six months to a year? You can gain a little weight. You gain like, not a little weight, not yeah. two or three pounds, but 20 or 30 pounds. Whoa. Plus they had milkshakes and hamburgers, all these different things, whatever. I'm like, and I was working there, so I, I ate whatever for free. Yeah. Can you imagine being like a 18-year-old kid working in the shop? You can take whatever you want. I don't think we were supposed to, but we did anyway. And, and like, so it's I gained a lot of a place. Right. So I gained a lot of weight. And I, I left college fat. Not so, okay, you can call me fat, whatever. And I w- didn't want to be fat. So you know what I did? I started running. I wanted, I didn't, let me tell you a trick. And yeah. This is good because a lot of it's emotion. A lot of this is, is, is our, we feel like we can't do something when physically we can do anything. I went to the Nike store, or I don't remember where it was, and I bought a brand new pair of running shoes, a brand new pair of running shorts and shirt and socks. Uh-huh. And it made me feel good about myself. Wow. And you know what? I have new clothes. And I put them on, and I, I have to say the word literally because it gets overused. I ran from my driveway to my neighbor's driveway. It was a long block. I ran to there and back. It took like 30 seconds. And you're probably going to laugh at me. Oh, what a waste of time. He just ran for 30 seconds. It's a waste. You know what? It was a waste. But you know what happened? That, 30, that one driveway, the next day, turned into two driveways, mm-hmm. then three driveways. Within like a week or two, I was running around this whole block. And within three weeks, I ran a mile. Wow. I am not a runner. I I was not considered a runner. I was a fat pizza eater. So like when I could run a mile, I was like, I ran a mile. Hey, that's a pretty big deal. It's a big. And deal. because I ran one mile, guess what happened after that? You were able to. Second do mile came out down like that. Third mile, next thing you know, I'm going to five k's, and it was like nothing for me. Wow. And of course, I started running the ten k's and the ten milers, because I started with one driveway. So any excuse that you make that you can't run, that you can't exercise, that you can get the healthiest way to get high in life is to run. It's just an excuse. You can put on your running shoes and go run to your neighbor's driveway and back. Coach, I have to point out something. I also started running. My dad dropped me off at running practice and said, you're going to the running team. Mm-hmm. When I went to the, uh, my new school, and I did not used to be a runner, and I hated it. I hated it for the first Three days, and my dad said, just one more day, you have to go, and then you can quit. Right. The okay. fourth day, I liked it. Yeah. The fourth day, I made friends. Yeah. The fifth day, I started to really enjoy it. And, and let's, let me be completely honest here. It's not always this great runner's high. I think you've probably experienced that, oh, too. Oh, yeah. It's hard. It starts um, off hard. It, it's it very hard. starts off hard. It gets hard. It is hard. So what's the key? So what's, what's the, the key? key? Knowing that it's worth it is my, my opinion. There's one other key here. What's the key? Consistency. Consistency. Even when it gets hard, you push through it. And it's not all or nothing. If you, if you set yourself a goal that I'm going to run a mile today, and you get to a half mile and you're feeling miserable, it's okay to quit. I always said, I used to play right. basketball every, on Sundays, and I always said, like, if I got hurt or tweaked or something, I'm like, you know what? I want to play next week. I'm going to stop playing. There's nothing wrong with it. You are not considered a failure if you go out to do a race and you don't finish it. Take a walk. Walk a little bit. You know? I would say I say better to run a little bit than walk a little bit, but yeah. but, but, but you can walk a little bit and then start running again. There's yeah, nothing wrong right. with one run, walk, run, walk. Take a little rest and keep running. Just do what you can. You uh, know, Just I, do what sure. you can. And I think that's the key is do it with others. Do it with friends. 
Join well, a runner's club. There's nothing clubs are more great. fun. Because it, when you, it's funny. I never realized what it was like to run a race until I ran a race. Right. And there is a lot of energy. It's oh, like, it's so oh, great. It's, it's like you're around hundreds of people. And the energy, the the flow of people running. It's like, and once you get over in your head, you that if you don't feel bad that someone passes you, you know, on yeah. the street. Once you get over that, I don't care. I'm running my race. It's for me, not for somebody else. I'm not running against this guy. I'm not running against that guy. I'm running for my own health, my own benefit, my own energy, and my own health really and make it into a whole ritual you have the the pasta the night before you wake up and you have whatever your pre-run food is oh <coughs> it became an event the whole races became the yeah. whole now i don't know if corona's going on now but it became this whole event where they had the, the day before they had like bands and they had you go and you pick up your packets and they yeah. sell all the running gear and food right. and things like that it right. became the whole fun thing at the end they always had of course bands and food and bagels and oranges and things it was yep. pretty fun Oh yeah, I kind of miss it actually. I gotta, oh, I gotta it's start. a great energy. Yeah, it's so much fun. Yeah, I don't know why I'm, I got to start getting back into into races. Now, coach, I'm sure some of our audience are wondering. Okay, great, but I only want to do it if I can run a marathon. What do you have to say about well, that? Well, let me say. So there's an idea that people only take on something if it's big. Like, I, I've I've known a number of people that have said, "Oh, you know, I'm gonna do a marathon." Oh, you're right. No, no, but I'm gonna train for the. You know, for the maybe not New York, what, one of the marathons. There's lots of marathons: Miami, West Palm Beach. Um, you know, I'm sure all the cities have marathons now because it's it's a money maker. Sure. It's good for the city. It's good for tourists. So they will only do it if they run a marathon, and they train for three, six, four, five, six months. They run the marathon, and what happens six months later? They have this little belly because they stopped running. Because they only do something if it's big. It's either go big or go home. And it ends up being go big, and they sit at home on their couch eating bonbons while watching TV because they're not doing it a little bit every single day. It's better to do something a little bit every day than do one big thing. Right. You don't have to just get into it and say only on this. Or on this. Yeah, so don't feel like that you have to do it. In fact, I don't even do marathons. So I don't think it's – I'd rather, I'd rather just run a little bit every day or – now maybe four days a week, yeah. then run one big thing, and it's like you know what? I'm done. I'm quitting, because right. really, if you want to live a lot of energy, if you want to, your brain produces these drugs. I, I, it's I don't tell you, it's the truth. Mm-hmm. It's there for you waiting. You don't need to take Percocet. You don't need to take any drugs or marijuana or coke, whatever it is you take. You don't need that. Everything is there for free. God put these things in our brain for us to tap into them, and then when we when we when we when we are able to break through those first few days of running, which are difficult, oh yeah, then you're going to start feeling that that energy, and you're going to. It comes to a point where like you feel like if you don't run for two three days, like you want to run because you want that feeling, and it's so good for you. Oh, and you become such a better, more complete I, feeling person. Well, I have one more thing. I, I was um, when I was in the coin business, I used to wake up really early, and. Go. Um, I used to go to work early in the morning, like six in the morning. I do these auctions. And I had to view thousands of coins in order to price them and to bid oh, on them. Wow. And my my competition always asked me, "How are you able to get up so early and work so hard so early in the morning?" I never told them this, but I, the, the the secret was, I ran. Wow. I would even stop if I if I was at a convention or work somewhere. I would stop at three in the afternoon. I I I put my running clothes on, go run for 20, 25 minutes, take a shower, and go back to work. And the last few hours of work. I was I accomplished so much because I ran. It's a, it's the key. It really, there's nothing healthier. There's no healthier way to get high than to run. There you go. Yeah, it's full. Of, it gives you energy. Gives you keeps you away from sickness, disease. Nothing better. You just got to make the move. Stop making excuses. Stop saying your knee hurts. Stop saying your because there's something called ice, which I sometimes have to do. You ice down your body parts, sure. but you feel good when you're sore. Sometimes there's a lot of runners' injuries, but. It's about the consistency and just doing it at your pace and what you can handle and knowing that you're going to get better, but you have to stick with it. That's right. And it's great. It's, oh. And you're going to enjoy it. You're going to see so much more of your city. You're going to find the best parts. You're going to see the, the beautiful um, Yeah, going to – when trails. you travel, you go to cities and running different cities and running in Colorado, running different places. Sure. It's amazing. Think about how much more of the city you see when you're running five miles versus when you walk one or two miles. Mm-hmm. When you're seeing those extra three miles, mm-hmm. it's a lot of the city. Mm-hmm. And if you have joint pain, you have other injuries – then get out there and get on a bike. You know, just do something. But and That's move. right. You want to do something. You want to be pushing your limits and growing every day. Thank you so much for watching this episode of the Fish and Coach Show. We appreciate your subscriptions and all of your comments below. See you next time. Thanks for watching the Fish and Coach Show. If you like what you just watched, make sure you like, subscribe, and comment with any ideas you'd like to see on any future episodes. We'll see you next time.